Hey everybody, welcome inside the broadcast booth. Brian right here riding solo today. Uh, just back from a great Align Technology Practice Development Workshop in Austin. So shout out to all the attendees listening today or listening in the future to this podcast that we're there. Excellent episode uh, we have for you today. We're going to talk about the challenge we all face from a CEO standpoint, office manager standpoint, uh, any kind of leadership team, management team, regardless of the type of business you have. But one of the most important that I've seen, having been in healthcare now for so many years, is it's a real challenge. Even though it's a challenge for all other businesses, it's especially a challenge inside the practice environment. And that is changing human behavior. I mean, everything you try to do to move the needle, whether it be uh, our popular employee performance indicators courses, uh, receptionist courses, the training, even changing management, it all goes back to changing human behavior. Today, we're going to talk about the steps that can best accomplish that, as well as some other challenges that will arise along the way. Hope you enjoyed today's episode. Before we get started, let's fire up the music. Welcome to the New Patient Group Podcast, where doctors and other healthcare professionals crush their competition with innovative business, marketing, psychology, and entrepreneurial strategies. Learn how to better the patient experience, improve employee and management performance, and how to best increase conversions, efficiencies, referrals, profitability, revenue, and more. Learn from five-star customer service, psychology, business, and marketing gurus top producing clinicians, and the most successful entrepreneurs throughout a multitude of industries. Now your hosts, practicing doctor and president of OfficeAutomated.com, Robert Barton, and the CEO of New Patient Group, consultant and speaker for Align Technology, the makers of Invisalign, author for the Benson Koppel Resource, featured in the Dental Economics Ask the Expert section, and international five-star customer service guru and life coach, With companies featured in Forbes, CNBC, and the National Journal, Brian Wright. Hey, everybody. Welcome inside the broadcast booth. Hope you had a fabulous weekend. Looking forward to a great episode today. Also want to say thanks to all of those that listened to the previous episode and have already gone to our new online store at npguniversity.com and used those codes that we gave out to get your free EPI course and as well as we're going to be mailing some of those four disciplines of execution books out because you guys did. You're going to have a letter from me. Um, as well as using some of the other promo codes. We had quite a few receptionist course purchased over the weekend. And also, already the the attendees at the Austin event uh, this past weekend, or on Friday, a lot of you have already used your codes as well. So really appreciate it. I know that stuff is going to help you a lot, and really appreciate the loyalty and the trust. Today we're going to be talking about uh, changing human behavior. It's the absolute number one most difficult thing for CEOs, for management teams. One, because we're all human and we all have issues with changing our behavior at some level. And what we're going to talk about are the three stages of human behavior and what uh, the three categories that we put people under as far as how they handle and deal with change. And then we're going to get into the five ways uh, that are basically the five stages to changing human behavior. And not only is that going to help Uh, you guys better your employee performance and your organization, but it's also going to better you as a management team, as a CEO, because a lot of times, and maybe not you listening out there specifically, but a lot of times the biggest challenge in moving a business, a practice, an organization forward is the management team. And you know, the four disciplines of execution book that we recommend everybody read, it talks about, again, the, the hotel reference that we use all the time. It's so ironic that they use it too, is that, look, companies like the Ritz-Carlton are never satisfied with the performance of management, the employees, and how well they take care of people. It doesn't mean that they think that they're bad by any means, but what I mean is is they're always trying to improve it. There's always new ways that they are finding to improve their customer service score. If you're an organization that's just satisfied the way you treat people, uh, and you think that you're in a situation where you can improve or don't need to improve, you know, obviously... This episode is really going to help you because it is going to discuss those three things that we all deal with or the categories that we all fall into with change as far as your employees and yourselves, but it's also going to talk about five ways to improve. So this may apply to you. It may apply to your employees. It may apply to the entire organization. Uh, The other day uh, when we did the team breakout at the Austin PDW event, had a couple of employees come up to me and say, look, This stuff is awesome. Best event we've ever been to. Really appreciate the information. But, and there's always that but, how do we get 
our doctor to change? How are we ever going to implement these great ideas that are proven to work that you are given us when the doctor doesn't want to change? And those are the examples I'm talking about. A lot of times inside the, the practice environment, it's a one or two situation. It's one doctor and management wants to change, but the employees just aren't on board or the other way around. Employees are just gun ho about change, but the management team isn't on board. So this is a podcast that's going to be very important for you all to listen to as an entire organization. Now let's let's dive into the categories of really everybody falls into these three categories that we're going to start talking about here. Okay. And the first one that I talk about is the go-getters. Okay. The go-getters are the people that everybody wishes they had. If you could duplicate all of your employees one after another, the go-getters would be that person. You know, the person that's showing up early, leaving late, always asking people if they need help. They're always wanting to improve. If you want to take your organization in a certain direction, it's a yes, sir, yes, ma'am. You tell me what to do, and I'm going to bust it to help you get there. It's those type people, and those people always outperform others in their career. They always make more money. Uh, It may not be tomorrow. It may take them five or ten years uh, to get there, uh, maybe longer than somebody else that's not a go-getter. But they always inevitably have a better career, a happier career that in turn makes them more money, more money over the course of time. Now, in the outside of when I go through all these three, obviously, that's just the first one. And there's a lot more about the go-getters, but I just want to paint so we're not on here three hours. Literally, what I'm talking about right now, just the go-getters could be a three hour presentation in itself. But we're going to go through these quickly, but I want you to keep in mind the go-getters and the final one that I'm going to talk about make up the majority in businesses outside of the healthcare practice. We do these studies, we do these stats, so we keep them very carefully with clients that have our in-house coaching program uh, and other things we do as well. Even our mystery call program, we keep uh, tabs and statistics on this because we can tell who's wanting to change and who's not. But the point being is, is that the one, the go-getters, and the final one I'm going to talk about, the third one, Outside of healthcare make up the majority. Inside the practice environment, the one I'm about to talk about now makes up the majority, and we call those the downers. These are the people that are always trying to tell you why it can't happen, uh, why we can't take an hour appointment and get it down to 35 or 40 minutes, uh, why all the change shouldn't happen, uh, we're fine the way we are, why are we trying to change things when it's not broken, the list goes on and on. They're, they're a barrier not only to the training but to the culture. They're the ones that when you're doing social media, everyone's doing content, but the one or two downers over in the corner refuse to do it. I don't want my face on social media or I don't want to do this or we don't have time for that. Everybody knows who they are. Now that, unfortunately, the majority of employees inside the healthcare practice make up the downers. Now, there's a lot of reasons for this, and it's the reason why we're talking about the Austin event that we try to do life coaching for the hourly employee, because a lot of it is not technically even their fault. It's it's things that have happened to them in their personal lives, even in their career. And it's why we have a podcast coming up about millennials and how to best motivate them. Because if you motivate millennials properly, they're as good as any generation that there's ever been. They're very misunderstood, and they're misunderstood simply because a lot of people don't know how to best handle the millennial crowd. So therefore, they just turn around and say, these millennials are not good, or I can't get them to work, etc. Well, the reason why you can is because you don't understand them, and you don't understand how to get them to do what you want. So there's very specific steps that we're going to teach in an upcoming podcast about that. But back to the topic in hand. So the downers make up over 60% from what we've tracked inside the practice environment. And it's unfortunate because this is a perfect example. We started with a practice. There's a practice in California uh, that started with our on-site uh, coaching program uh, recently. And I'm, I'm at, I happen to be their coach. And you know this job can be just the most fun, rewarding job you can possibly imagine. There is nothing like waking up in the morning every day and having the responsibility to grow someone else's dream. It is absolutely incredible. Now, the beauty of that is, is while you're doing that, you get to grow your own. But I personally get more satisfaction. You know, everybody listening out there, if you guys called me and said, hey, look, you grew my company, my practice, a million dollars over the course of a year, I would get more satisfaction out of that than looking at my own bank account and saying that I grew my own a million dollars in a year. And that is the passion we have from an entrepreneur standpoint of how much we believe these ideas need to be put inside the practice environment. But the point being here is, is this practice over in California is a dream come true to be able to walk in every day. They are the ultimate in the go-getters and the third one that I'm going to talk about here momentarily. They are absolutely a blast to work with. Every single thing we work on, from the office manager to the doc, even the doc, and the reason why the whole organization is like this is because it's the manager and the doctor. The manager and the doctor are both the go-getters, okay? 
they're both the go-getters. So every single thing we work on, the response is, this is awesome. We get to do it differently. There's absolutely a way. We're going to work on it. We're going to practice it. We're going to tweak it. We're so excited to do this. The doctor says, oh, change my exam. I want you to tell me what to do so I can change my wording, make it quicker, make it more streamlined. The office manager is always, I'm going to hold everybody accountable. We're all going to do this. This is going to become our way of life and on and on. Now you can see from a coaching standpoint, one, how enjoyable that would be to work with, but two, and really more importantly for me is, is they're going to get results. You know, I, I, in the end, that's what we're paid to do, but the results can only happen if the people within the practice environment, especially management, take the go-getter approach. Now, a lot of the management in healthcare are the downers. They're the ones that have done things the same way for 20 years. They think everything is fine. They think that they're growing like crazy or they're growing. And a lot of the things that actually keep them from growing a lot more and making everything on autopilot, they refuse to do. So a lot of times management is the downers, even though the team is not. But the team ends up being the downers because they see management not on board or arguing or fighting things or I don't want to do this or whatever it is. So that's the difference right there. Even when we're coaching practices is that when we deal with the go-getters and the third one that I'm going to talk about momentarily, not only is the job more fun, but the results just they crush our other clients that don't have that attitude. And they also crush their competition because we talk about all the time, your competition cannot compete. They have absolutely no chance at all of gaining traction on your practice when you do the things that we talk about on this podcast or that we implement as an organization because they have an outside-in approach to growth that we talk about. We are teaching the inside-out approach to growth. And if you're just tuning in for the first time, what that simply means is, is the focus is on conversion. The focus is constantly on conversion while you're building up your digital presence to create a brand, to get more incoming calls, to get more likes and shares, to move up the SEO ranks, the YouTube search ranks. So while you're constantly focusing on conversion and producing content, you're converting slowly but surely over time more people than you were before. And that equates to six-figure growth. Meanwhile, your social media content and your SEO builds up and you're converting more because you're being seen more. And then when those calls come in, you convert those calls because your receptionist is better. Then you get the person in and you convert them more and you get more referrals to eventually to the point where you literally have to do zero outside advertising other than social media, your website, and a constant focus on conversion. Those three things, conversion, focus, digital focus, and then mystery shoppers to hold everybody accountable to the training is the inside out a growth to approach. And it's what the finest institutions do. But for whatever reason, you could tell the 99 percenters that exact story and they still won't do it. So that is what we mean by the inside out approach. If you are the first time, if you're a first time listener, haven't heard us discuss that before. So back to the topic in hand, you've got your go-getters, the people that are willing to do anything, all you have to do is tell them, okay? Then you have your downers that are really trying to hold, even even maybe they're not doing it intentionally, but really they hold the whole operation back, whether it be uh, you know us coming into your organization or whether it be your own ideas or somebody else coming into your organization. They are absolutely holding your organization back. And then you have what we call the could-bes. Now, let me use a sports analogy really quick. Anybody that follows sports knows the word potential, okay? That player has the potential to be great, or boy, they have the potential to be such a good hitter, or they have the potential to just be an amazing defender. We all know that word potential. It's a scary word, okay? I think anybody wants that word because if you don't have potential, you could be in trouble in your career. But potential really also means is you're not there. You haven't reached it yet, okay? So the could-bes are ones that really have a lot of the traits of the go-getters, but they also have a lot of the traits of the downers, and they really could go either way in their career, there are ones that maybe they have a fabulous personality, uh, maybe they're maybe they're good looking too, uh, maybe they just they have a lot of expertise and a lot of just talent, and it's just a matter of management getting all of that out of them. And it could be management too. It could be a doctor listening. It could be you're an absolute fabulous clinician, uh, but you need work on how to take the business side of your organization to another level. That is, and maybe you're somebody that has a great personality and you're a great boss. You have the potential to be famous as an organization. There's really three categories we put organizations in. It's good, it's great, and it's famous. 
Those are the three we categorize whenever we're working with practices, okay? So back to this, but it's also the employees, all right? You get that employee that, you know, maybe they show up early, maybe they help build a really good culture, but they just won't take the training you give them and implement it. But it's not even that they don't want to. So it's not that they're telling you, I don't want to, or this isn't possible. They just, for whatever reason, they aren't getting it. So you have to put and devote more work to them. Whatever it is, you get the point. Those are the three categories. You've got your go-getters. You've got the one I just mentioned, which again, the could-bes, those two categories make up the majority of people in businesses outside of the practice environment, okay? Really over 60% whenever you combine them, probably over 70. And then you have the downers that make up the minority in, in businesses outside of the practice environment. But to, in your practice, in practices in healthcare, the downers are what makes up the majority. So that environment and reps out there that listen, we have a lot of reps that listen to this. That's what you're dealing with when you go in there and you try to change behavior. And this is why also I talked about earlier on that this is a great podcast for management. It's a great podcast for employees. This is also a great podcast for anybody out there that is held responsible for helping a practice grow, whether it be their Invisalign growth, whether it be buying more materials. And that's the thing with companies out there that, you know, make your money on a practice from buying materials. Your number one goal should be finding ways to grow that practice. The more they grow, the more materials they're going to buy from you. So all of this stuff, especially when we get into the five changes of how you change human behavior, I think will really help you. Now, how do you change these behaviors? How do you deal with them? How do you change them on a daily basis? Now, very, very long presentation to get into all of that. So what we're going to do is we're going to narrow it down to five, and we, we define these as the five stages to change, all right? Now, the first one is you have to clearly define your objective, and I'm going to get into each one of these, of course, but step one is, is you have to have a clearly defined objective. Without that, you are not going to change anybody, including yourself. The next one, takeoff. That's what we call it as well. The third one, acceptance. Fourth is tweaking. And five is accountability, okay? Now, let's break these down, all right? Clearly defined objectives. That's where I want to start. Now, the clearly defined objectives really is simple, but it's something that business owners fail miserably at. It is not a consistent across the board, clearly defined objective. Let me talk about this for a minute. This will help employees, management, reps, etc. So, we want to grow our Invisalign business. I'm going to just use that as an example because so many of you out there do it. But I'll also throw in some other examples. We want to grow our dessert sales. Okay. Uh, we want to grow our production. All right. Great. I think everybody in their respective business would agree. You know, we want to grow revenue with new patient group, obviously. You want to grow revenue with your practice, obviously. Uh, reps out there, you want to make sure that there's more starts coming from the practice. But none of that is a clearly defined objective. And when you fail in that category, really, and these are all in order, you've got to succeed at each one to lead to the next in order to be successful. So clearly defined objectives is more like this, okay? As an example, by December 1st of this year, we want to see a 20% increase in referrals. Now that could be from your clients, your patients, your customers, depending on what type of business you own out there. But we want to see a 20% increase in referrals. Now, the way we're going to do this is we are going to increase our customer service levels in three different areas. One, we are going to ask for more referrals. And we are going to track each person in here. And this goes back to our employee performance indicator course, guys. Remember, the lag measure, the ultimate defined objective, the clear objective is the 20% increase in patient referrals. That's your ultimate goal. Your leads and the numbers that you track in order to get there is we're going to ask patients for more referrals than we are today, and everyone's going to track the amount of people they ask for referrals on a daily basis, record that, and enter it somewhere. Now, that could be your own Excel sheet, or it could be our employee scoreboard that we have in our practice virtual platform, whatever it might be. So that is an example of a clearly defined objective and tracking the data that's going to help you get there, okay? But you can't get there without first defining a clear objective. That could be, look, in 2000. 18 or 2019, we had 250 Invisalign starts, okay? In 2019 or 2020, whatever year it is, we are going to increase those starts 20% by December 1st, all right? That is a clearly defined objective. Then you must come up with the ways you're going to get there and track them. One of those ways is we are going to scan every new patient consult with the iTero machine. 
you're going to track that data and you're going to enter it in every day. So you have visibility of which new patient consults are being tracked or excuse me, being scanned with the iTero machine. Then another one would be, we are going to track new patients that were then scanned with the iTero, but then shown the outcome simulator of what their smile is going to look like at the end of treatment. Now, this all works no matter what treatment goal you have, okay? This, the leads that I'm talking about would be different. So if you want to increase your crowns 20% or some other clear aligner or, or whatever it might be, you can plug it in to the example I'm giving and set your leads. There are no wrong leads, okay? So I just gave you two ways of many more that you would increase your Invisalign starts by 20% by December 1st. See, that is... And the reason why, again, we go back to the leads is because the leads are fixed with accountability and training, okay? You can train people to get quicker on their iTero scan. You can train and hold people accountable for making sure the scan is done on every single new patient. There's no way to hold people accountable for growing your Invisalign business 20%, which is why growing the Invisalign numbers or growing any one specific treatment inside your practice, the focus cannot be on that treatment because you can't control it. The focus has got to be on all these other leads, but that means you have to have people tracking the data, which is what that employee performance course is, all right? So back on a little bit more topic. You've got your clearly defined objective. You have to discuss this with the group, with your team. As an example, hey guys, I really got, I appreciate you guys coming into what we call, and this is for listeners that aren't clients, we call this our operational success meeting. You block one hour every single week in your organization And that is when you define objectives, you define leads, you role play, you practice, you do social media content, all the things that you must do to compete and destroy competition in today's competitive marketplace, you now have time for whenever you block that time. So important. Now, what you do during that hour, you know, you've got to come up with that stuff. That is also what we help our clients with, with our on-site program, is that we help them come up with these leads, their lags, building out the scoreboard, coaching, all that other stuff. What is your agenda on a weekly basis? Because that's just as important as having the weekly meeting to begin with. But you got to start somewhere, okay? So when you go through that, this is, again, an example. So, hey, guys, appreciate you guys showing up today. Excited for our our operational success meeting. And today we're going to discuss a few different goals that we want to accomplish in 2019, okay? And it's going to be cool. I'm excited about this. I really think we can get there. It's really going to help better the patient experience. And, you know, just as a leader, I want you guys to make as much money as you possibly can. So everything we're going to be talking about today is the way we're going to do bonuses in 2019, okay? We're not going to be doing bonuses on production and collections, all those boring ways that everybody does out there. We're not doing production that way. We're not doing goals that way. Those days are over, okay? What we're going to be doing goals on is the things you can control, your own performance, okay? We're going to listen to mystery calls that come in. And based on how that mystery call goes and how, uh, you know, the coach has analyzed that mystery call, we are going to bonus you or not bonus you, okay? It's all up to you. If you change your behavior and change that, then that's a way to get a bonus, okay? We are going to, and, and this is an example of how you talk to your people, okay? Now, we're going to do all of that based on clearly defined objectives, all right? Now, those objectives, one, is we want to increase our new patients by 20% this year. Last year, we had a total of 350 new patients. So this year, I want to grow that by 20%, all right? But that's not going to be our focus, all right? Our focus is not going to be there. Our focus is going to be on how many patients we're asking for referrals, our new patient telephone call conversion, and me listening to the mystery calls and playing them in front of the group to make sure the training that we are doing is getting better and improving, okay? So that is how you would do that, all right? So that is a leader talking to their team about clearly defined objectives with a little twist on how those objectives will ultimately make people more money at the same time. Now, the next one is takeoff. Now, takeoff is not easy by any means whatsoever, but it's not the hardest, all right? Takeoff is really, in my mind, what I call speed of implementation, all right? This is something that it it haunts really all entrepreneurs, business owners, employees. It's an epidemic. But takeoff is really just get it implemented as fast as you possibly can and make it clear that immediately you expect things that you're talking about as a leader when you clearly define your objective needs to start happening immediately. And people are going to be held accountable, which we're going to talk about later in another step, okay? This is not something that we're going to discuss 
and then four years later, it's going to come about, all right? This is something that when we leave this meeting today, guys, I am so motivated and excited for this, and I want everybody to know something. This is now our methodology. This is the way this organization is going to run. This is the way that we are going to do it on a weekly basis when we meet with each other. We expect greatness. We expect excellence. But what we also expect, and this is how you talk to the downers, is that anybody that's skeptical, anybody that has a mentality of we don't have enough time or this is more work, you can, after this meeting, come and talk to me right away because it's the only time I'm going to ever allow those words to come about again in this organization. See, all of this is not only a pre-education, but it's how you clearly define the objectives and then accomplish your takeoff. Because you have to nip the downers in the bud right in the beginning and letting them know, look, this is not going to change. This is the way it's going to be. We're doing this to improve your career, doing this to improve the patient experience, doing this to grow the organization that I've worked so very hard for throughout my career. We're going to do this together as a team. So anybody that's going to try and hurt the process by being somebody that is the downer in the group, come talk to me after. Now's your chance because if you don't, that's the only time we're going to allow it because this is going to be implemented in our organization. See, you're having or you're hearing me have conversations that I would have or did have when I owned practices myself. These are conversations that we have with employees with New Patient Group. These are conversations I've had with multiple companies that I've owned that have been very successful. It's one of the reasons why we've done little to no outside advertising in the history of any of my companies, and they've all been very successful, is because the focus is constantly on things like we're talking about today. This is another example of the inside-out growth approach, okay? You've got to lead by example by setting those clearly defined objectives and then moving on to the takeoff portion, all right? You also have to be very clear on how you want it to take off. You can't just say, okay, we're doing it, implemented. No, 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 no. You have to have a plan so the takeoff goes right. No different than that plane sitting on, this is why we call it the takeoff. The plane sitting at the end of the runway does a final, they do a lot of pre-flight checklists, but that one right before they take off, there is a final takeoff checklist. Sometimes that happens right before they pull in the runway and they zoom off. Other times they pull in the runway for a brief moment and go through the checklist. But in order for the plane to take off properly, safely, consistently, successfully, there is a checklist that the pilots go through. That is the reason why takeoff is the name of step two, all right? There has got to be your own checklist of things that when you leave a meeting after clearly defined objective that says, okay, step one, Nancy, you are in charge of making sure people begin asking for referrals and tracking them and entering them on a daily basis. That is your responsibility. Now, it doesn't mean that you're the only one asking for referrals, guys, but it was, it does mean, Nancy, you're the one that's going to be held accountable within my organization for this happening, okay? I'm going to you. So tomorrow, if I look and I see the stats and they aren't entered from today, then you and I are going to have a discussion, okay? This is your project. Take ownership of it. And that even talks about in the Four Disciplines of Execution book that we talk so much about. The book, and I love reading books like this because it backs the things that we teach, all right? The things that we teach are not normal to hear from a healthcare perspective, all right? Healthcare consultants do not teach the things that we teach. This is a far realm of outside of healthcare expertise, customized and brought into the practice environment. And that is the reason why we believe it works at such a high level, is an outsider's perspective. Now, we know the practice environment inside and out because we've been in it for so many years now. But everything we teach, it does not originate from inside the practice. So you have got to understand that your people have to take ownership of this. It can't be you. You build your people and your people build your business for you, allowing you to get everything on autopilot and step away. Now, when we get to the final final stage of this, step five, that is where it comes full circle. We'll talk about it then. But these are examples, of course, and we can't teach them all on the podcast, but these are examples of a takeoff procedure. You've got to have people that are put in charge, and they've got to be put in charge of things. That's how it's got to work. Otherwise, it comes and you crash on takeoff. All right, you set yourself up for failure. So you have, let me walk you through this, you have your clearly defined objective, which is let's grow our new patient numbers by 20%. 
by December 1st, okay? That's one of your clearly defined objectives. We were at 250 last year. This year, we're going to grow that by 20%, whatever that number equates to. Now, I want you to do that math. So when you're actually doing it, you should say the physical number. 20%, that would be another, you know, what, 20, 40, 60, a little 60 plus new patients that we want to reach this year, all right? So whenever you have that, now you move on to takeoff. Now, the way we're going to accomplish this, guys, is one, we're going to have our lead measures. We're going to define the lead measures, hear what they are, A, B, and C. Nancy, Susie, whoever, Timmy, you're in charge of that project, okay? You're going to make sure that people are doing this. You're going to make sure that people get better. And we're going to teach you how to be the expert at asking for referrals. So that way you gain respect for your team that you're in charge of to where whenever you teach them in our operational success meetings and you do role plays, you're going to be held accountable. You're the adult in the room. That's how the takeoff procedure works. Now, it also works with having properly defined documents. So if you want new stats to be tracked as far as our employee performance indicators, that's why we have all the trackers for you. So the trackers would be printed out and handed to people at the meetings, okay? And the beauty of that is, is we also have a team that will help you build out customized ones for you, or you can do it yourself if you're not using our scoreboard. That is something that you can simply build out yourself. But those have to be ready at the meeting, okay? They can't be ready 10 weeks from now because nobody will do it until 10 weeks from now. So those would be passed out at the meeting. People would be put in charge. And these are obviously as it relates to stats. You can use it, whatever else that you need to do. Take off is your clearly defined checklist to make sure that it happens immediately following the meeting. And part of that checklist is telling people that it needs to happen immediately starting now. This goes back to take, of, take off to speed of implementation. The finest, I use this all the time if you watch Shark Tank. One of the biggest traits that those people have is getting things implemented quickly. It is not a 10-year process. It's not a two-week process. If they get an idea that they like, tomorrow it's implemented. Now, there's going to be kinks to work out. We're going to talk about that here soon in one of the stages, one of the steps here. There's going to be kinks to work out, so it's not going to go magically fine. But the only way you're going to be able to work out the kinks is once it's implemented. And once it's implemented, it may cause some serious disasters. And here's the difference between what the top 1% and 99% do about those disasters. Here's what the 99% do. Oh, we can't do this. Oh, oh, patients upset at us. Oh, stop everything. Stop everything. That's what the 99%ers do. The vast majority of people, that's what they do. Here's what the top 1% does. Okay. So you're telling me that there was a, a patient or customer that they were, they were upset? Okay. All right. Tell me, what, tell me what was said. Okay. Let's learn from this. Okay. Let's jot that down. Okay. Step one. I'm going to call that person. I'll make it right. I've got that. Okay. We'll give them a Visa gift card and, and tell them, look, we're working on some new uh, experiences for the office to make, pe- you know, make people feel more special and, and really give you the attention you deserve. Throughout that process, there's some hiccups. We're going to make it right for you. Okay. I'll take care of that too. Now we know what the hiccups are. All right. The hiccups were this person, for whatever reason, they had to wait 20 minutes in the waiting room. Uh, or once we got them back into the op, uh, then they waited 30 minutes there. It was just a mix-up on the schedule. So now, during our, ne- our next operational success meeting next week, we are going to take those and we're going to figure them out, okay? Because there's easy solutions for this. We just have to talk it through and make it better. And you see the difference in the mentality. That is the, I call it the Starbucks, Ritz, Carlton, Walt Disney mentality. So if you're listening to the show all the time, you've heard that to your blue in the face. If you're relatively new, you may or may not. But that's the mentality of those people. That's the mentality of the Shark Tank entrepreneurs, all right? Unfortunately, the mentality for the vast majority of practices and people within, it goes back to that downer mentality. It's not a criticism, guys. I love all of you out there. Otherwise, we wouldn't do what we do. I mean, it's a major passion to help you. And that's the reason why we just tell the truth. The reality of the situation is, is most practices not only are not speed of implementationers, But when they do it, it scares them because it never is going to go perfectly fine. You're always going to have hiccups. So therefore, the second the hiccup happens, it's a, let's stop, let's stop. Instead of a, okay, let's be calm about this. Let me know what happened. Next meeting, we're going to talk it through. We're going to get ideas in and implemented to make sure this doesn't happen again. See, that's the difference in mentality. And that's the mentality we want you guys to have. The top one percenters. There are so many things growing a business out there. There are so many things, whether you're a restaurant, a law firm, a financial firm, whatever it is, that's outside of the practice environment. 
98, 99% of the things that have made them successful, you can easily apply in a little bit of a customized way to the practice environment. Easily. And what we're talking about today is an example of those. All right. Speed of implementation, the takeoff process. Now, step three, this is acceptance. This is probably, probably one of the harder things that will take place. All right. It really goes in order, I think. I think that step one to step five, it goes from least hard to most difficult, all right? So step one, the clearly defined objective, is really the easiest, okay? There's no wrong clearly defined objectives as long as they're clearly defined. What makes them wrong is is when you say we want to increase uh, our Invisalign starts or our treatment starts overall by, you know, that, that is, that's when it's wrong, You've got to have, we want to increase our treatment starts by 20% by December 1st. Here's how we're going to do it, okay? But that's not hard. The hard thing is just doing it. Then you have takeoff. Takeoff is a little bit harder than step one. Takeoff is not hard, but it's harder. You've got to have your ducks in a row. You've got to be stern, but not a dictator. You've got to go through your checklist. You've got to let people know, hey, look, these are the things you're going to do moving forward to reach our clearly defined objective, That's not hard, guys, but it is harder than defining your clear objective. It does mean that you have to act like a leader. It does mean that you need to give full visibility to your team on the things they need to do. Otherwise, it's not your team's fault. It's your fault. All right. Once you define clearly what you want, go through proper takeoff measures. Then it's on your team. All right. That's when final step that we get to really has to be at its highest levels. Now you have acceptance. All right. Now acceptance comes in with really the three types of people that we talked about. The go-getters, the downers, and the could-bes, okay? That is when acceptance really falls back on those types of three people. Now, the acceptance for the go-getters, easy, you're done. All you have to do is say, look, this is what we're going to do. I want help with this. I want you to be on board. The go-getters are like, okay, let's do it. Tell me how. I'm there. Yo, you want me to track stats and enter them daily? I'm in. I'll do it. No problem whatsoever. Matter of fact, I can't even wait to see visibility on uh, the things I'm doing right and the things I'm doing wrong because I really want to help this organization. I want to make more money. And really, I want to give the patients the best possible experience. Those are the go-getters, all right? The ones that will always be more successful in life. Even, I talked about earlier, them making more money. Even the rare circumstances where they don't, they're still going to be much happier throughout their entire life. Then the could-be's, would be your next ones that you need to get in. You need to, they're going to do it. But the could be, remember, is that potential that they have not reached. So they may say, look, I want to do this, but they may just not do it. They may just need extra help with consistency and all the things that most people struggle with. The could be's may just need more attention, meaning that they may go do it day one. And then day two, they may kind of do it. And then day three, they may not do it at all, but it's because they may not be managing their time properly. They're never going to tell you, I don't have enough time to do it. They just inevitably sometimes don't do it unless you give them proper direction and you're constantly focusing on it, okay? And that is, again, no, no different than an athlete. They'll bat 300 in baseball for a couple weeks and then go through a slump and bat 100 for about four weeks. And that is they have not reached their potential. That is exactly that person. But the downers... Unless you do what I said earlier about defining your clear objective, but also during the takeoff process, defining exactly your expectations of the downers not bringing everything down. The, I don't have times, I don't want to do this, this isn't going to work, all of that stuff. You need to give them one chance to say it and say it privately, not in front of the group, because those people bring everybody else down. So they can come to you and say, look, here are three things that I don't want to do and here's why. And that, and then that as a leader, that's when you listen, you learn, you show them that their voice is important, but then you also be a leader and say, look, Betty, I totally understand those things. And you know what? I'm going to work on those things with you. All right. We'll get through those things. I understand them, but I want to make this, I want to make this very clear. This is the way of our future. So I am not going to let the I don't have times and all the things we're talking about, I am not going to let those be an excuse for moving this organization forward. So what I talked about today, it is implemented immediately, and that includes implemented for you. Now, we will work with you to make sure your, your concerns get better, but understand this is the direction of the organization. See, that right there is how you handle the downers, right there. If you don't handle the downers that way, 
then they will always bring everything you try to do for the rest of your career down. And the thing is, even if it gets implemented, if you allow these people in front of the crowd, in front of the organization, to constantly be complaining and saying why it can't happen, even when it gets implemented, it will never get implemented at the levels it otherwise would because of these people. And see, these people's attitudes wear off. They have the potential to bring the could-bes down with them. Because remember, the could-bes have some downer in them, okay? So if your downers are allowed to voice their down stuff, it will organically ruin the culture of your organization. It's inevitable. I've seen it for years in every type of business, but especially within the practice environment. You guys are in a closed, tight-fit environment. You spend more time together than you do with family. So that culture needs to be strong, and I can ensure you the downers will ruin that culture and keep you from getting where you need to be. So now we have the clearly defined objective. Grow treatment starts by 20% by December 1st. Take off. This is how we're going to do it. This is the things I won't accept, the things that must happen. Here's the checklist. Here are the people in charge. That's take off. Make sure your plane takes off properly by going through the proper checklist and accountability methods. Okay? Acceptance. All right? Step three, acceptance. Acceptance goes back to defining those three that we're talking about, the go-getters, the downers, and the could-bes, all right? You must handle those people properly during the acceptance process. Very important. Then we have step four, and that is tweaking. And tweaking goes back to the speed of implementation, all right? Now, it's one thing to define your objectives. It's one thing to take it off. It's another thing to get people to accept it. It's another thing to then tweak it. And this is a problem for a lot of people. They are looking at one path in the future and they have a very difficult time making exits on the highway and getting back on the highway at the proper time. Tweaking simply means that what you implement is not going to go smoothly, all right? If it goes smoothly, you're very lucky, all right? Tweaking is saying, and this is why those hourly weekly meetings are so critically important. Tweaking means a few things in our minds. All right. One, it means you need to listen to your people. The feedback is very important, but the feedback cannot be, this is not going to work. I don't have enough time to do this. That can't be the feedback. The feedback needs to be positive, constructive criticism on things that need to change in order for you guys to reach your clearly defined objective of increasing whatever 20% or 30% or whatever your number is. And whatever the goal is trying to be reached, new patients, treatment starts, referrals. So that's what the tweaking takes place. As an example, maybe one of your clearly defined objectives was I want to increase our pending treatment by 20%. And what I mean by that is, is pending treatment, anybody, you know, I walk in your practice today, you prescribe me whatever, I say, let me think about it, and I walk. How do you get me back through the door, all right? For most practices, I would say the vast majority of them, that process represents one hundred dollars to $500,000 of growth every year for the rest of your existence by having a proper follow-up procedure in place. There's a huge part of what we do because the follow-up procedures inside the practice environment usually stop. If they even exist, they usually stop after three contact points. There's all kinds of science that proves that three is not enough, five's not enough, seven's not enough. So we go through that process very carefully and why our clients grow so much because of it. Now, tweaking would be this for that example, all right? Feedback, positive feedback. As in, maybe Timmy says, guys, you know what? I'm making the calls. We're increasing our calls. You can see from my stats, uh, look at the amount of calls, you know, day one when we started this and then how many calls I've been making recently. I mean, that's got to be a 30% increase in the amount of outbound calls I'm making to patients. So it's going well. I'm tracking my data. It's great to see the data. But the problem is, is I see that people aren't answering during the times that I'm calling. So out of the, all the phone calls, that's great. But I'm getting voicemails. So what I think we need to do is tweak the time I'm calling. So what we may need to do is tweak the schedule to give me, a, to give me the time to do it. See, that is positive, constructive criticism. That is when you know your culture within your organization is one of accountability and success. Tweaking is not, guys, I just don't have enough time to do this. You know, we got one patient after another. I didn't enter my stats yesterday. I mean, come on, give me a break. And see, unfortunately, that's the majority of what happens 
when we talk about tweaking inside the practice environment. Another example of tweaking could be if you're trying to increase patient referrals by 20%, and one of the stats that you're tracking is, is how many people every single day are you asking for referrals? And the tweaking might be, look, I'm asking for referrals like crazy, but I just, I don't feel comfortable doing it. It's just not natural yet. So I would like more practice, maybe some more role plays on teaching me the best methods to ask for referrals. So whenever I do ask, I think we're going to be more effective because what I haven't done, I haven't let me being uncomfortable keep me from doing it. I'm doing it. I think I'm asking, you know, if you look at the stats day one, I was asking a few people a day. Now, if you look at it today, I'm asking eight. All right. So that's, that's what we want as an organization. We want those stats, those EPIs, those leads to improve because organically everything else takes care of itself if they do. So I just need some more practice on how to get better. See, that is an example of tweaking and making things better. Your focus is on improving it. Your focus is not on constantly getting people to stop telling you why they can't. And that is why it's so important during your clearly defined objectives and takeoff points that every single thing you do and say, set yourself up for letting the downers know that you won't accept it. And that is what tweaking is all about. It's tweaking things here and there to make sure that you are going to ultimately accomplish your wins and losses, which is your, which is your clearly defined objective. Treatment starts, more patient referrals, increased customer service, production, collections, all of those things. But the focus is not. The focus is on what the takeoff period talks about and the EPIs that are going to be tracked. That's the focus. So you've got your clearly defined objective, your takeoff period, your acceptance, your tweaking, and now step five, which is the most difficult. As I say, each one grows in difficultiness from step one to step five. Here is the most difficult one especially for people in management within the practice environment. This is what we get quite a bit. I hear this a lot. Now, you don't hear this in other businesses, but you hear it inside the practice environment. Such and such is so good with the patients, but gosh, they just drive our team nuts. Or I just, I can't get rid of so-and-so. You know, she's so good in area A, B, and C, but she's just bringing the practice down in areas D, E, and F. Or she just won't listen. Or she shows up late over and over and over again, what do I do? Now, what every other business owner does is puts them through a very specific accountability method procedure and then terminates them because they have the documentation that protects them and they go out and find somebody new. We all know that hiring somebody, the process is a pain. We all know that training people is a pain. That's the reason one of many that we have our online store at mpguniversity.com. We wanted to do the work for you by building out all of these training videos that automates the training process. Not only does it automate your current employees, but what if you invest in them and five of them leave tomorrow? Well, now you've got the same training sitting there in your LMS in our practice virtual platform to retrain new hires. But it also brings back the accountability to keep retraining your existing people because by no means are they going to get it one or two times through. It becomes a methodology that you do for the rest of your life. So the accountability portion, the reason why it's a problem is people are scared to death to hold people accountable at the practice level. In management listening, this is the only way it ever gets implemented at a level that it otherwise would. And it goes for so many. Just the last week, we talk about this at the end of our practice development workshops, uh, speaking for Invisalign. And I just we did it the other day in Austin where we said, look, you know, raise your hand if you got some good ideas today. The whole crowd raised their hand. And then I bring up a slide that says, well, I hate to tell you, but those ideas are worthless. And it's true. There's not a good idea on the planet worth its salt unless people are held accountable for actually doing it. It's like a personal trainer. It's why, it's why we're actually probably going to change the name of our coaches, the personal trainers. I mean, we've been seriously thinking about that because that's what we are. I mean, not only do we implement our own stuff at high levels, but we're also there to help you implement anything else you learn. Because everybody has good ideas in some form or fashion. And really, anything implemented well works. Now, certain things work better than other things, of course. But you still have to be held accountable. And whether you're a large corporation, whether you're a tiny little business, accountability is key to performance. Key to changing human behavior that we're talking about today. It all is wrapped up. So all the things I've been talking about, the accountability then needs to be defined. Okay, and that can be defined in any way you want, but it has to be defined as an example. 
So moving forward, we are going to start entering in stats daily, all right, based on the discussion we're having during the takeoff period, all right? Now, the accountability process of this is that I'm going to give everybody one pass. So as an example, if at the end of today, when everybody clocks out and leaves, and I look at the stats entered for today, if any one person did not enter their stats, you're going to get one pass, all right? And we're going to notate that one pass. And people that use our practice virtual platform, that's why this all intertwines. You've got human resources in there that you just simply write notes in, and it stores it for life. You've got your EPI stat scoreboard in there. And whenever you see weaknesses, you move right over the curriculum. You give them the video training necessary to make their weaknesses a strength. It all intertwines with itself and automates your business, automates your practice. But that one pass is going to be notated. And then moving forward, it's a three-strike process. All right? If you don't enter your stats for a second time, that's going to be strike one. You will be written up. Step two, if it happens again, whether it's a week from now or two years from now, you're going to be written up again in that strike two. All right? If it happens a fourth time, that will be strike three, and you will be at risk of losing your job. Okay? That conversation must be had with your organization. That is not running a dictatorship. That is not being mean. That is not going to get people to not like you. What it is, is you being a leader and defining very clear metrics on exactly how you want your team to carry out things within your organization. It doesn't mean that you can't have fun. Gosh, we have so much fun with people here at New Patient Group. It's crazy. We have fun with our clients. The employees love the things we do because humans want to be held accountable. And the only people that don't love what we do are the, are the, you know, the people that sit over in the corner and just say, yeah, I get paid 25 an hour. It's all I ever want. I'm good. Get better. What do you mean? Get better. That's stupid. We're already fine. Of course, those people aren't going to like this, but people for the most part really enjoy this doctors, office managers, employees, but the accountability has to be there to really get them enjoyed at the highest level. Otherwise, there, there's no there's no end game in the sense of, oh, I didn't enter the stats. It's okay. Management's not even looking at it. Which, if you haven't listened to the podcast before about uh, employees respect what you inspect, you need to listen to that podcast. It was from season one. So important. Because if you're not inspecting it, as an example, let's say I'm an employee, I go three days in a row and I don't enter my stats and I don't hear from management. Well, yeah. Do you think I'm going to keep doing it? No. And that happens quite a bit. Even with the practices that are obsessed with our EPIs, one of the, one of the faults that management falls into is not looking at the data. So all of a sudden you get two months down the road and you decide to look at it and oh, the organization's not entering them. You have all these white days in the calendar when the calendar should be turning green. And that's our, for those of you who don't use it, we have this calendar that goes over the scoreboard. In management, any day that's white, it instantly shows management that at least one stat wasn't entered for that day. If it's green, all the stats were entered. So it's that color coding that makes your life easier. But the point goes back to the accountability, and people struggle with this. And what they struggle even more is, is carrying it out. And I use the analogy all the time when I speak about my son, Braden, who's three, you know, reaching up on countertops and taking things off. And the only way he stops that is if we hold him accountable. If we keep saying, Braden, stop, Braden, stop, Braden, stop. He keeps doing it. Of course he keeps doing it because there's no consequences to his behavior. So now it's, okay, you touch the countertops, TV's gone for a day. Oh, sorry, you know, you did it again, TV's gone for another day. Those type things. But then you have to stick with it. So if you say TV's gone for today, And come three o'clock, he says, can I please watch a show? And you say, yes, it's over for you as a parent. It's no different from management perspective. It's over for you if you say, look, I'm going to give you a pass. And then the pass happens and you don't document it and show them that you've documented. Then if they do it again and you don't do it, it's over for you. And that is why changing human behavior is so difficult because you have to change your own if you have any expectations of your employees changing the human behavior too. Now, we've talked so many times before about the neural impact, the spotlight effect, and all of that comes into play here too. Which each step of this, and that from a psychological standpoint, the three types of people that deal with change, the go-getters, the downers, and the could-bes, It's no different. The spotlight effect does not really take play with the go-getters. That's how my mentality is. Bring on the change, man. Always looking for different ways to improve our own client experience, 
always looking for ways to better myself as a speaker. Give me the feedback. I will improve. I love it. The spotlight effect really doesn't come in play. I've overcome it. If you haven't heard those podcasts, you need to listen to them because it is the biggest barriers. I think the podcast is called the three biggest barriers uh, to your dream life and dream practice. And those barriers are the neural impact, the spotlight effect, and another thing as well. I want you to listen to that podcast. But back to this accountability. You as a leader absolutely have to hold your people accountable. And it doesn't mean that you're running a mean type deal. So one of the things we hear all the time is, well, we're a small business. We're not a corporation, so we don't do that. And, and it just blows me away. I'm like, well, okay, so you're a small business that, you know, corporations are growing like crazy. They are in the process of slowly but surely putting the family-owned business out of business. If you can't look at that and go, okay, we need to run our small practice more like a business, because when you do, you give patients a better experience, by the way. But because we need to run it more, because that's who we're, that's who's coming to get us. People are coming to get us that do run it like a business. And the smaller you are, the littler window you have for lost opportunity. That's the thing that I think gets lost a lot. Is that, sure, big corporations, they grow, they have millions. But the problem is, is if big corporations grew like we talked about on this podcast, I believe they would put all the family-owned businesses, practices out of business in 10 years or less. Every one of them would be triple or quadruple in size than they currently are today if they use the methods that we talked about on this podcast. It's the reason why the one I owned a long time ago, I grew a one-location practice of 250. For those of you who don't know that who listens, I did that with all of the methodologies that we talked about. We know it works, but it works just as well, if not arguably better for the small practice that has one because you have lesser windows for lost opportunities. Those big corporations lose millions every single month in lost opportunities that they do not know about because they don't track the right data. You as a practice lose thousands via lost opportunities every month. Some of you hundreds of thousands every single month by not tracking the proper data, by not holding people accountable, by not going through the steps that we're talking about today. But you have to have visibility of it. If you don't have visibility of it, then, you know, there's nothing to fix. And in your mind, everything's fine. But the accountability, wrapping this all up, is difficult because that requires the conversation. You know, Timmy, Betty, look, you got to get better. Here's what we talked about. Here's my dream as a leader. I went to school for eight years, 10 years, whatever the number is. Came out of school in debt. And this is my dream for this organization. And everyone's going to follow along. So this is the second time you've done this. And this is the second, this is the first write-up, okay? Remember, the first one was a pass. Here's the documentation for that. Second one, I told you you're going to get written up and you are. I'm serious about this. That is an accountability measure. That is a culture of success and accountability. But it also requires difficult conversations, it requires difficult conversations. So this is not only the strategy and the what. Today's also been the how, okay? You've got these three people that you're going to deal with, including yourselves, on, on, as far as behavioral changes. You've got the go-getters, the downers, and the could-bes, all right? Each need their own special attention in their own way. And we're going to do other podcasts about that as well. And then there are five stages in order to change. Clearly define your objective, Utilize proper takeoff procedures, takeoff checklists to make sure that plane takes off properly. Acceptance, all right? That's when you're really dealing with the three ways people accept change and deal with change. Tweaking, so important to tweak the things that you've implemented because it's never going to go perfect. And then accountability to bring it all back together, all right? Do those things and it's going to help you change behavior with you and your management team as well as your employees and in turn give a much better patient experience and grow your organization in the process. Thanks so much for listening today. Hope you enjoyed today's podcast. We have plenty more coming up. And for all those out there listening today, I'm going to give you a promo code. Type in free EPI5, free EPI5. And the reason I want you to do this, that's going to give you our EPI course for free. And if you sign up for the scoreboard, the scoreboard is only, it's only $97 monthly to give you the visibility that's necessary in your organization. If you sign that up, I'm going to buy and mail you a copy with a letter of very specific things I want you to get out of it. 
I'm going to mail that to you in the address you provide when checking out, okay? If you don't provide or if you don't select the scoreboard when checking out, it's still going to ask for your credit card, but it's not going to charge it, okay? It's just what registers in the e-commerce uh, merchant store in the back end. So don't think it's going to charge. So EPI5, or I'm sorry, free EPI5, enter that pro mode. Also, phones, episode 5. Phones, episode 5. Five. That is going to get you about $3,000 off our receptionist course, all right? So type that into the promo code. You'll get that $3,000 discount. I appreciate those codes are going to be good for about two weeks from today, okay? They do expire. Uh, if you listen to the previous podcast as well, those will be good for about another week. Uh, this podcast, it'll be good for about two weeks from today. So make sure you use those and give us feedback. We're here to help. Our 800 number's on there. Uh, a lot of you out there listening know my cell phone. We're always here to help you as well. You're not on your own. So thanks for listening today. I hope you got a lot out of it. We'll talk to everybody soon. Bye-bye.